The Book of Judges by John Smith. And so the Israelites exchanged daughters with the people around them. They had themselves a sexy time. Where's the porn music? Bow chicka bow bow. Satan, hush. So the Israelites married with the people around them and served other gods, like the gods of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. All those people with barely pronounceable names. The Israelites continued to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. They continued to intermarry with the people around them and serve their gods. The Israelites forgot all about all of the miracles and wonders that the Lord had done for them in Egypt during the time of Moses. They forgot all of the wondrous things the Lord had done during the time of Joshua. The anger of the omnibenevolent Lord burned against his chosen people, and he delivered his chosen people into the hands of a foreign king named Cushan Rishalathim. The Israelites were under this king's thumb for eight years. But the Israelites cried to the Lord, and Othniel, son of Kenaz, brother of Caleb, fought against the foreign king. I will give Cushan Rishalathim into your hands. And Othniel defeated this foreign king, and the Israelites knew peace for forty years. Is this another forty days and forty nights kind of forty years reference? Is that like upteen bajillion long time again? After Othniel, the Israelites once again did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and the Lord was angry with them. These people seem to have some really short memories. So, like before, times got hard. The Israelites fell under the thumb of another foreign king. His name was Eglon, king of Moab, who joined forces with the Ammonites and the Amalekites. For 18 years, Eglon ruled over them. Once again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Oh, so it must be true what they say about there being no Israelites in foxholes. There was this left-handed man named Ehud from the tribe of Benjamin, and he made a plan against King Eglon. He strapped a sword under his clothes on his right side where the guards would not think to check. Eglon, the king of Moab, was a very fat man. Ehud appeared before the king with tribute. Your Majesty, I have a secret message for you. It's so super secret that you have to dismiss your guards from your presence as I can only reveal it to you when we are alone. And the king told his guards and attendants to leave so that he could hear the secret message. So now that we are alone and you have no protection, I have a message from Lord Yahweh. Are you ready? Here it is. Die, fat ass, die. And Ehud reached with his left hand to his right side, where the sword was hidden in his garment, and he plunged the sword into Eglon's back. <coughs> Eglon was so fat that Ehud could not pull the sword back out, because the king's fat had closed over the hilt. Wait, wait, wait. So the king's personal guards had just leave the king's side when he was alone with any foreign ambassador or dignitary or tribute bringer? Was this the official king guarding policy? And this king was dumb enough to be alone with this Ehud guy just because Ehud said he had a secret message? You're telling me that the people guarding a king wouldn't think to pat down the whole body of someone entering the presence of the king? I mean... Was it that implausible that someone could have hidden a sword on the other side of their garments? We are talking about a sword, right? With an approximately, I don't know, 18 inch blade according to the footnotes in the Bible? How easy is it to hide a friggin' sword anyway? In an old timey Hebrew garment no less. You're telling me there weren't any left handed people even before this Ehu guy? And his garment was good enough to hide an 18 inch blade from palace guards? 
This whole story just seems really implausible. So Ehud escaped out the porch and locked the doors behind him. Eglon's servant found the doors locked and thought their king must be relieving himself. Yeah, clearly Eglon was just doing a number two with old Ehud, the left-handed, in a locked room, just telling his secret messages or something. Makes perfect sense. We shouldn't be worried that Eglon seems to be taking his sweet time in there dropping a deuce with an audience of one foreign dude with nobody watching him. Ehud went into the country of the tribe of Ephraim and blew his trumpet. The Lord has given Moab into our hands. Do you know how I know? Because I just stabbed their fat ass king. But I need a new sword because my sword's stuck in his big fatty fatkin's belly. His jiggly fat covered up my sword all the way to the hilt and I can't pull the damn thing out. So someone get me a sword so I can do more righteous killings and slaughter blood sprinklings. And 10,000 Moabite Wilhelm Screamers died that day. Those Wilhelm Screamers keep coming back though. They're a pretty tough tribe. They always take me out of the movie whenever I hear those screams. I mean, Wilhelm must have had a lot of kids or something. And we can't ever seem to get rid of those screamy bastards. And the land had peace for 80 years. 80 years? That's up teen bajillion long time times two. Because remember, 40 stands for long time, like 40 days and 40 nights. Alibaba and the 40 thieves. I mean, I know the Israelites could count past 40, since they could count their killings and genocide and the tens of thousands of people, but for some reason, 40 stands for an uncountable number. Whatever. After Ehud was Shamgar, who killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. Poor Shamgar. For a dude who killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad, you think you'd get more of a mention? Hello, true believers. It's me, Ehud the Left-Handed. This ends the second video of Judges. You should totally subscribe to John Smith's channel right now. But whatever you do, don't give that miserable heathen any money on Patreon. Just think of what immoral depravity he might spend it on.